Okay. Okay. Hi, people. This is Angela Power Disney, AngelaCashes.org. And this is a legal wizard, not wizard, I'm not going to say wizard, a legal genius uh, <laughs> known as David Ward. So, David, tell my listeners, um, my viewers, a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, everyone gets to the point where, you know, there's something desperately wrong. And usually when your life gets turns to a big mess and then you start delving into well, what's gone wrong, what is going wrong, what's going on. And, and the first thing I did was look at what everybody else is doing, which is all the free men on the land, all the common law. What, and the question was, why are these people not getting results? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So but... I, I had immediate problems to deal with. Um, one of the first sites um, that I did find was a, a website called Get Out of Debt Free. Oh yeah, and, and they they their three letter system was was absolutely brilliant, and I ended up putting that on steroids. But the thing that that made a change for me and everything else is is what is it that everyone's missing, and and everyone's saying the right things, but there's some some small thing missing, and it and it's the consent of the government. That consent of the government has got to be a legal and signed consent. And it comes under the definition of statutes. And statutes is a lit, and you won't find the word statutes in your, in your Oxford English Dictionary. So you've got to look up for the definition of the word statutes in the in the law dictionaries. And in the law dictionaries, that is a statute is a legislative rule given force of law by the consent of the government. Now that word by creates a legal dependency. And if that legal dependency is not fulfilled, then the legislative rule cannot be given force of law. This is Boolean. It's Boolean logic. It's, it's simple. Yeah. Okay. So with that definition, I was actually um, charged. Um, it was a parking ticket. And that's a claim made under the Traffic Management Act 2006. So I've got an obligation on a liability for, for parking the car where I shouldn't have parked the car. So I took that to tribunal and I won the case because the, the 65, current day 67 million people in the UK have not legally signed that, that consent of the government. If, if you, you, if it's a legal document and everyone signed one at some point in their life. If you go to the dentist, you've signed a legal consent. And without that legal consent of the dentist, you're not going to get any dental treatment. And it's the same with the doctors. You've signed another legal consent again. And it's the same at the hospital. If you're going for an operation, you've signed the legal consent. A legal consent is a legal document. And without that, without those 65 million legal consents of the governed people, there is no governed people. Right. So, all... so based on that logic, let, yeah. um, I'm just going to rewind a bit. Uh, David Ward is somebody I was, uh, was highlighted to me by Andy Devine. There's a video on my channel called um, Lawful Options. And Andy was very excited about this uh, discovery um that david made of no consent so by that logic and i get it it's very simple when you say you sign for the dentist the doctor the hospital you know the hospital the surgeon whatever so if so, if a policeman stopped me for speeding in order for a speeding ticket to be legal he would need me to sign something no before the, the speeding ticket can be legal the 65 million people in this country or any country, I've got to have signed that legal consent before the acts and statutes can come into effect. Okay. So but bringing the claim for speeding is illegal and criminal because no one's got an obligation or a liability under the 8 million acts and statutes. It doesn't matter which one it is. They are all fraud. They're all criminal. They cannot be implemented. So I'm just asking you to talk to me like a five-year-old. I'm getting it so far. But if if... If it applies that when I go to the dentist, I sign a consent form. Before you get the treatment. Yeah, before I get the treatment. So so how how is it that a policeman cannot gather signatures one by one? So that, and now most people wouldn't sign if they knew. But if he stopped you and said, you're speeding, you're driving dangerously, whatever. And I don't, I don't condone dangerous driving, by the way. But if he stops and says, you're speeding, can you just sign here to confirm that I've stopped you or whatever? Is that not a viable way for them to trick you into consent? Well, that's tricking someone into consent. You know, you've got to give your consent in full knowledge and understanding of what you're doing. Tricking someone into consent is not legal. It's illegal. It's okay. 
because you're being tricked, it's fraud. Okay. Is your affidavit too long for you to read out, or is it is it very long? The one that was it one that you discovered that made case law, or did you make case law? I made case law. Okay, tell us a bit about that then, if you can. Oh, Where, whereabouts in England are you, by the way, if you feel like saying just um, roughly? Cool, Lancashire. Cool. Um, well, I was born in, in Lancashire, uh, but then it changed the boundaries and it became Cheshire. I was actually born and lived most of my life in Warrington, which is between Liverpool and Manchester. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah but my, my English nana was from Wally Grange. Yeah. Uh, but then my grandpa moved with Fords down to Dagenham in Essex. So, uh, and I had a sister that had a place in Manchester as well. I just recognised the accent from part of my family. It's, it's uh, northern, you know. Um, I'm a northerner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's distinctive. I, you can't get away from it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, it was to do with the traffic ticket, yeah? Okay. Park my car where I shouldn't park my car. Yeah. So, that's a claim made under an act. So, we're, ta we're only talking a live event. We're talking actual case because I took that to tribunal. Right. Okay? And I won that case in tribunal. Right. So, now I've won a case in tribunal using what I just said about the legislative, the legislative rule given force of law by the consent, the legal consent, and I won it on those terms, on those grounds, on those facts. Wow. Right. So that puts every act of statute in the bin. It does, doesn't it? Now, that was a formal government legal tribunal. The government can't escape this. Wow. Now, when I got the results of that tribunal, it's, it's, I didn't actually go to the tribunal, and I wasn't going on a telephone tribunal, because, you know, I've done a lot of research, like people have, you know, you can get berated and um, they get bombasted and you can get just pretty run over in, in the courtroom. So I don't go to the courtroom ever. So I did it by correspondence. I did it by mail. Yeah, yeah. that's what Andy Devine was saying to me. Keep it on the paper. Don't go near the courtroom. Keep it on the paper. Don't go in the room. Right. And the reason for that, because everyone talks about the straw man. Yeah. Well, it was a straw man, the Mr. David Ward, the person that won that case. Okay, okay. And that spins everything backwards from what everyone's saying, that the straw man, the person, belongs in his own by the government or the crown. No, he's not. She is not. It is not. Right. Because that formal requirement that you've signed and given your consent has got to be in, in effect before there can be a government. Okay. So the government is totally illegal. Okay. Okay, yeah, I can, I can, I can hear that. So, are you saying that the the straw man can change laws or set precedents, and therefore, how do you feel about a live life claim? What do you think about that? Well, it's in the wrong room. It's like you're taking a set of drafts to to a um, a chess match, because okay. the courts, the courts are a business. It's a, it's a company. There's a a before I got to the affidavit, which is the affidavit you read in, I won the case law, but to, to, to make that bigger, to, have, to give it more impact and more effect, I drafted together a 65-page affidavit. And in that affidavit, there is the, the statement made by um, Shadran Kathuta's PhD of the London Institute of Economics. Now, this is, this is government doctrine. You can cite this guy on what he said with a definition of the word states from if you're a law student or a law degree and you can use his reference it, uh, because it is doctrine and facts in in your thesis okay okay and Gadran Kathutas gave a definition of the word state okay. now we do have a secretary of state okay. the government is a state and a state is a company and that's the definition of what the word state means okay it's okay. understanding the, the meaning of words because a statute's well, the word statute originated from the, from the Latin, statutus, and in, and in English, that is a statue. It, it's, it's, you know, an, um, a statue. And you cannot have a statute, a statue obligation. You can have a contractual obligation, but you can't have a statue obligation. Yeah? That doesn't make any linguistic sense. Okay, yeah, because I heard that reference before, that a statute came from the word statue and I, I studied Latin at school, very basic, but I did. And I didn't I didn't get the connection. I thought that was a miss a miss that's because, that's because there is no connection. It's an oxymoron in language. Right. 
Okay, no. it doesn't make sense anymore. You can't have a statute obligation or an obligation because the words obligation and liability do not exist outside of a contract. Okay, so a contract right. needs my written wetting consent. And for a no, 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 a contract is nothing to do with consent. A, a contract of employment is a contract. It's signed by the parties, it's signed by you, and it's signed by your boss. Okay, okay. So two parties come together and sign something in agreement. That's a contract. That's a contract. Okay. Where you've agreed what the obligations and the liabilities and the terms and conditions of that contract. And then again, talking to me like I'm a five-year-old, how does a statute or act differ from um, a law? Well, there is no such thing as law. Okay. Can you expand on that? Yeah, absolutely can expand on that. And I do this with the, with the barristers and the, and the lawyers all the time. Who, who, who can create law? Well, it's the law of the land. Well, really, when did, when did, when did the land grow hands and, and write down the law? Because the law has got to be thought, it's got to be spoken, it's got to be written down, and it's got to be agreed. So where is the book of law that everyone's agreed and signed the legal agreement to agree to what the law is? And if that does not exist, then there is no such thing as law. And how does that relate to, if it does at all, things like the Magna Carta? Well, no one's who signed the Magna Carta. What, right. is, what, is, a, what is a Magna Carta? It was called a Great Charter. Well, what is a charter? It's a contract. It's a right. treaty. A treaty is a contract. Right, right. So who signed it? Well, right. the, the barons didn't sign it because they made a demand of King John. He said to him, you monkey boy, you will put the great seal and sign this charter or we will depose you as king and elect another. Right. So, so that, is the, that is one of, of the legal two components to make something legal. Okay. So, so it's not legal. The Magna Carta, first of all, is not legal. Yeah? Okay. And people go on about legal and lawful. Well, if it's not, it can be legal, but not lawful. Well, no, it can't be legal and not lawful. If it's illegal, it's unlawful. It's okay. an oxymoron that people jibber-jabber in language. to okay. get trapped into a rat's maze. Okay. All right. So um, on this, so therefore, when we vote, are we giving, I asked Andy this and he said no, but when we vote, are we submitting to being governed? Are we no. giving away our consent or power? No, because it's not legal. An X in the box is not legal. Um, and it, if, if that was true, okay, if the vote tied us in to a contract, then I could not have won the case on the grounds that I did, on the facts that I did. Okay. So the vote goes in the bin. It can't both be true at the same time. Okay. So have, uh, other than a parking ticket, have you used this law in anything else? Yes. Every time someone made a claim under an act, I've used it 38 times. You've used it 38 times successfully? Yes. Wow. But never in court. Don't need to go to court again. You've always done it on paper? All on paper. Do you agree with Andy that my first step should be to print out your 65-page affidavit and serve it to the two detectives that are um, investigating me? No, serve it on the guy that, that, that started the investigation. The complainant? The complainant. I don't formally have an address for him and he's trying to allege harassment um, against me. So uh, I could try and secure an address and send it registered post, but uh, maybe a, a better way, I don't know. I don't know his address formally. I well, if there is proceedings, you know, has this guy actually started a case? Is there a case in court? He flew to Ireland in June 2018 and filed a harassment allegation against me. I got, I got raided in August 2018. A file got sent to the DPP in January 2019. And a year later, the DPP just seemed to be able to look at it now. They, they petitioned Google to hand over all my data and Google complied. They went to court and got a court order to... to compel Google to release my data. Okay. So that's so, where it is. So there's a guy who's bringing legal, legal action in court. Well, I haven't had a decision from the DPP yet. I spoke to the detective, the senior de detective sergeant, 
And he said, the DPP has everything they need now to make a decision. And he said, off the record, uh, his opinion would be that it looks more likely to proceed to trial than not. So I haven't been informed that it, it, the DPP's made a decision or it's definitely going to trial, but I'm needing to get some docs in a row first. So there's no proceedings in a court at this point in time? Uh, not at this point in time, just simply that my tech was confiscated a year and a half ago. I haven't got it back. I got my phone back and uh, the DPP has a file on me and I'm awaiting a decision. Okay. So a guy has made a complaint. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Someone who makes a complaint, children complain. So as a... The thing is, a complaint is, is, is neither either there or nothing until it's formal and official where there is proceedings in court. Okay. It, it's very fairly, you know, well, what, what is a complaint? Well, he made an allegation. He made a harassment allegation. And he's got a track record of getting people he goes... In the UK, everybody he took to, to court for harassment, somebody got nine years, somebody got nine months, somebody else got nine months, somebody got sectioned somebody got gagged, do you know what I mean? He's had, he's had a 100% success rate up until now. And this is the Republic of Ireland I live in. And he's from the UK? Yeah, he's a UK citizen. And, um, oh, it's out of his jurisdiction? Yeah, that's one of my arguments, because also with Brexit, like Ireland is still in Europe and England no longer is. And there's also a thing I mentioned in a video that when I tried to complain that I was getting harassed online and getting death threats and so on, um, and character assassination and poison pen letters sent out everywhere to my kids' schools, to my neighbours, to my uh, GP, to my, um, you know, everywhere, all the papers I've published in in Ireland, uh, charities I've helped, there must have been about 50 poison pen letters. When I went to make a complaint about online harassment and death threats, I was told there is inadequate or no legislation in Ireland to deal with that. So this guy seems to have had have some pull with his friends yes. in, 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 the, in the, what we call a criminal institution of government, yeah? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Very, very highly connected. Kind of, I've, I've alluded to him before as a sort of a Jimmy Savile type, very well connected, uh, very, very powerful people. Um, well, these people aren't powerful, and I stop them in the tracks most of the time. In fact, all the time. Um, so, a complaint isn't. So, who's complaint? Who's a DPP? Some of you, because it's like the island. Director, Director of Public Prosecutions. I think it's a late, I think it's a woman. It was the last time I checked. Um, so Ireland's got no government at the moment. Um, we had an election, and there were three different party nobody had a majority to rule and they're still jiggery pokering around about coalitions so at the moment we don't have a government technically we only have a caretaker government well we, 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 we've never actually had a government because that's the part i was getting to in in the affidavit that i put together after winning the case law yeah? oh, okay and, and that second part the, i'm going to call it exhibit c in the affidavit is the fact that Shadran Kathuth has confirmed the fact that a government, that a state, sorry, which is the government, is a company no different to McDonald's. Okay. Okay. And the second part of that exhibit C is, is this fact. Um, um, the Lord Chief Justice Sir Jack Beeson, FBA, gave a speech in the Nottingham and Trent University in 2008. And, in the, and this is a documented speech. It's on the judiciary's website. But you can go find it and read it. If you go to Jack Beeson's speeches in, in Google, you'll find this speech, yeah? Okay. Um, and in that speech, he confirmed the fact that, and I'll, I will, I'll quote the, the actual paragraph verbatim. <coughs> His words were, um, due to the changes in 2003, it became necessary to reevaluate the relationship between the judiciary and the two stronger arms of the state's the legislative and the executive. Okay. Which means, in simple layman's terms, that the office of the judiciary is a sub-office of the state because of the two stronger arms of the state, which are two offices above the office of the judiciary. So, first of all, there's no separation of powers like they did 
they've maintained for, for hundreds of years. It's confirmed that the, there's a, now a conflict of interest because in any state matter, a, a judge in under any conditions is, is complicit, is not independent and therefore is disqualified because he's a company employee. And he is a company employee because the state is a company no different to McDonald's. Okay. 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 I just so looked being, up. So being, so being in the third office down of a company, which is no different to McDonald's, the judge has no more authority than the janitor at McDonald's. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're talking two doctrines there, which cannot be disputed by any fucking government excuse the language that the a it's a company by shadron cathutus which is doctrine and b the judiciary or the law chief justice is a janitor okay wow so he's got no authority i just looked up who the dpp is in ireland it's a woman called claire loftus um so you know and, and we'll see we'll see where that goes now Another another question. Oh, stop, stop. He's, he's instigated a complaint where now you're going to have the public prosecution in the, in the UK. Well, that would be the Crown Prosecution Service. Okay. Doing yeah, it's trying prosecution. to bring this case in Ireland. It's the Irish police and Gardaí corner that went to the district court and got a court order for my data to be released by Google. Mm. He's trying to bring these proceedings in the Republic of Ireland. Well, when the government does have any authority, because 65 million people or the people in Ireland have not agreed by signing the consent to be governed, first of all, the government have no authority, the police have no authority, and the judge has no authority. And how can this not collapse society as we know it? Well, the society as we know it is run by genocidal psychopaths. <laughs> it will be a good thing to collapse society as we know it. <laughs> and would you call yourself an anarchist? Absolutely, outright anarchist, because the word anarchist is means self-governance. It doesn't mean running riot up and down the street. And what do you think of the direct democracy movement? Complete, absolute rubbish. There's okay. never once been a democracy ever, because if you think about what democracy is, if there's a hundred people being democratic, and you've got 50 and 50 of, of each side, then you've got a stalemate. It only takes one person to change sides, and that's one person making a decision for, for the democracy. And the other 49 people are going to get pissy about that. There we go. The, only, the only true democracy is a democracy of one. One. My democracy is my democracy, and your democracy is your democracy. And any ideology of, a de of there actually being a democracy is a hypothetical concept in the abstract, which is total bullshit. Yeah, if I, if I as, a, as a person, consent to any laws, it would be the Ten Commandments. I'm a Christian, but that's... Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consent to them either, because the Ten Commandments was actually crafted. Now, let's go back to that, because, you know, I was brought up by a devout Christian Catholic family, so I actually know my Bible very well, okay? Um, Moses went up the mountain alone. Now, look, who is Moses? Moses was an Israelite, but he was raised by the pharaohs to be a terrorist. He was groomed. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was groomed. So Moses, first of all, is a terrorist. A terrorist. A terrorist. He was groomed to be a terrorist and to to dominate over over the Israelites. Okay. By the, by the use of fear. All terrorists use fear. Okay, so the Ten Commandments don't instill fear in me. I'll try a different angle. Um, how do you feel about the, you know, the do no harm, no harm, loss or injury, that common law thing? How do you feel about that? Well, I agree because the, 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 if you do no harm, loss or injury, yeah? Yeah. Then you've done no harm, loss or injury. Therefore, you've not committed any crime. Okay. But if you have committed some crime with some harm, loss or injury to someone, then who has the right to redress? The victim has the right to redress. Right. You don't have the right to redress. Right. I don't have the right to redress. The okay. victim has the right to redress. Okay, so therefore the police are, and this is what Andy was saying, the police are a, a mediator that, that, has, that I haven't consented to. 
Well, they can't mediate because they've got no authority. Okay. Okay. So I don't have Ricky Dearman's address formally. I've got a couple of addresses from researchers, but I haven't gone public with them and I haven't checked them. So if I wanted to serve that affidavit to Ricky Dearman, the best hope I'd have would be of serving it, you know, dropping it to the police that say they're acting on his behalf, investigating and asking them to forward it to him. Because well, they... if, if there's an investigation and you know this woman's name for the DPP, therefore you send it to her address because that's a public address. Oh, okay. So you send it to him. Care. Confidential, care of her. Okay. All right. That's a good point. Well, now you've got a direct link to him. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, and, and so you don't think the live life claim is, is relevant? Should I go ahead and file a live life claim or is that not relevant? It's completely irrelevant. You, you're taking a set of drafts to a chess match. It's in the wrong room. You, it, a live life claim is for the living, yeah? Yeah. Well, the only one that can be heard in the courtroom is the dead guy. That's what Andy said. That's why he said I should file a live life claim, but I'm not going so, to. So the judge, as being as a, an officer of the state, he can only hear acts and statutes. He is deaf to anything else. Okay. Legally deaf. He cannot hear or read or, or acknowledge a, a, a live life claim. Okay. So then, with, living. Then with that logic, if I got forced into court, supposing, let's just play it out, supposing I got arrested and forcibly presented in a court, in that case, it would be good to have a live life claim because then the judge can't deal with me, right? No. Absolutely not, and it's still completely worthless. And, you, and, I, and I do destroy these people. I was arrested. Okay, I have been arrested. I am. I'm, this is not a strange experience to me. I got thrown in the in the paddy van, dragged round to the magistrates' court. Apparently, over in Ireland, they're uh, caught. No, I'm. I'm not thinking about another guy. And someone else. I was in the magistrates' court in my socks, no belts, in front of the magistrates. Okay. Yeah, it's true. I've been there, and I walked out 15 minutes later. Wow. And, and what did you say? Well, for starters, there's no warrant for my arrest. Okay. And they can't arrest you without a warrant. Okay. And you're in that box under duress. Okay, this is a difference between walking into a courtroom of your own volition, yeah. actions, words, and deeds, and being dragged into that courtroom. Okay, so it's under duress. Okay. It's under duress, yeah? And when I... Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt and, you. And then I destroyed the, the, the magistrates. How? How? I don't want to use the word destroyed because I'm a peaceful person. I wish... No, no, no. no. You yeah. cannot be a peaceful person when you're dealing with terrorists. Fire with fire. Okay. okay. And being a peaceful person and a tree hugger is not going to help anyone. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm a tree hugger. I you, want you, justice if for... If you're a in that box, hugger. if you're in that glass box... You've got to get all 12 barrels out and be prepared to use them. Well, I will, I will fight for my freedom, but more so for free speech and even ultimately for the children's case to be, to be properly, for the children to be rescued. I, I, my bottom line is stop abusing children. Uh, you know. Right, every parent can rescue their child and it's quite simple. Okay, well, the the mother of the children of the case, this, this Ricky Dearman that's alleging harassment against me, he's the father of the children who disclosed in the Hampstead case. The mother tried to keep her children safe and they were kidnapped, effectively kidnapped from her. She was asked to bring them to the police station voluntarily to, to continue the their disclosures and then they kept them. The mother does not know how. There's a difference between knowing how and she does not know how, she can't. Okay, so tell us in, again, in simple language, how, sorry for that Illuminati sign. Um, a writ of habeas corpus. Okay, I've seen them succeed, but I've also seen them fail, like Field McConnell of Able Danger. They tried to serve a writ of habeas corpus to get him out and it got, it got ignored. Who served the writ of habeas corpus? Uh, uh, some of his legal team, Kirk Pendergrass and people like that. He's been in jail 110 days, something like that. He's a whistleblower. And they tried the habeas corpus. And, and the same in Ireland. Eight out of ten habeas corpuses seem to work. But the odd one, the judge just ignores it. 
well, you don't serve habeas corpus on the judge. You serve habeas corpus on the one on the on the ward and where he's being kept in in. Yeah, but in, what I'm saying is, it didn't come to pass. Sometimes it comes to pass, but sometimes it doesn't. Well, eight out of ten times do work. Yeah. Right. It's got a high success rate. Yeah, it does. It does. Okay. Now so, then, I need to I need to digress here. All right, go ahead. And and it, this is going to be wild. Um, side story coming in with my mate Mike Miller and his dog okay right and this is going to be straight straight it, it's it's wild but you'll see it understand it when I get to the end right so mates of mine and me were both engineers we built a stage it was a mobile stage we could drag it around with his with his Range Rover set the stage up whatever for an event yeah yeah that was an event in 30 miles away in Northwich Right. So Mike, I wasn't with him. Mike's there with his son and his dog setting up the stage that we made. Yeah? Right. His dog, um, no collar, no lead, managed to walk in, Now, this is in the afternoon. He managed to walk into the, the, the vets on the high street where they're setting up stage. Yeah? So the dog's wandered into the, into the vets. Now, the vets called the pound, and the pound have come to, to, to seize the dog, take the dog. And his son, Charlie, he saw it happening and tried to stop the guy. That's my dog. That's my dog. Yeah. But by this time, the dog's in the van and, and the dog's gone. Yeah. Now, the pound want to charge Mike Miller because, the, you know, there's charges here. They, they want to charge him to pick the dog up and you've got to, you've got to come and get and, and, the, and the keeping of the dog and what it costs to keep the dog. You know, it's going to cost him quite a few, quite a bit of cash. And obviously Mike doesn't want to pay this because so Mike wrote a letter to the chief of police. Yeah, for, yeah. for the, the area in. And the next day the chief of police uh, phoned, phoned Mike up the day after. Who's that? Is that me or you? I think it's me. Let me just terminate it. Sorry about this. I don't think I can minimize the recording. Hang on, it's me. I'm going to decline it. It's a friend of mine, Mike. Oh, okay. Um, so the next day, and the, the chief of police phoned Mike up. Yeah? Yeah. And after discussion with Mike, he said, look, my dog has committed no crime. All he's done is wander in, into, the, into the vets. And now he's been incarcerated. He's been detained. That's an illegal detainment. And within, and within hours, that dog was transported from 30 miles away by the dog pound people. I said, "There you go. There's your dog." Because it would have threatened their whole business. It would have it would have collapsed their whole business. And this is the whole point of an habeas corpus: is when it's an illegal detainment. Right. That's the function of an habeas corpus, and an habeas corpus is under statute, so they can't ignore it. Okay. Yeah. Even though statutes are illegal, because there's no. In their world, statutes are law. In right. their world, okay. There's a company called um, Robert Lazar's, who are criminal defence lawyers in the UK. It's a big firm. Right. So if someone's been incarcerated or awaiting trial, yeah? Yeah, on remand. On remand, yeah. yeah. Then uh, Robert Lazar's go out to this guy, wherever he is, yeah? yeah. Get him to sign all over the um, power of attorney to them. Yeah. Then they issue a writ of habeas corpus and get him out of jail. Every day. They do this every day. Right. Every single time. So it's because because they're a law firm. Right. Yeah. Right. Now then, what has, what's actually transpired there? They've gone to the place where he is. Yeah. They are now using the detained person's power of attorney to issue a a, a risk of alias corpus. So the guy has actually got himself out of detainment. Right. Yeah. Because that's the power of attorney. Right. The man, now in that world of bullshit, in that world of criminality, in that world of statutes, it's the man. Don't forget we're talking about the straw man here. It's the straw man, as well as the man or woman, that has the, the power of attorney. The company does not have power of attorney. This is why whenever you walk into a courtroom or whenever you go into court, they want you to use legal representation. Because, it, right, as soon as you give legal representation, you've signed over your power of attorney to them. 
Yeah, you're declaring yourself incompetent. You declare yourself incompetent, and they've got your power of attorney. Yeah. Go as your power of attorney, and they can do what they want at that point. Yeah. They've got the legal authority to do so. Yeah. But if you don't give them power of attorney, then you're what's called a litigant in person. Yes. Now it's litigation. Right. And litigation does not mean you've got to agree with a judge. Right. So let's go back to when I was arrested without a warrant and they've took me into the glass box and there's three magistrates. And the first thing I'm saying is I'm here under distress. Right. Under duress. Where is your warrant? Where is your warrant for my arrest? Right. Because without that warrant for my arrest, any proceedings in this room today are illegal, criminal, and a willful and belligerent act of terrorism. This is why you need to know the words. Right. And well, say that last thing again, a willful and what? Belligerent act belligerent. of terrorism. A willful it's and belligerent word, act of terrorism. It's the word belligerent okay. that is important. Okay. Okay? Okay. That has, that has immense meaning in, in their world of bullshit. Okay. Because it is a fabricated world of bullshit. So if you get taken into their... Do you believe in this thing of it's a ship in dry dock? If you get no, taken, complete rubbish. That's all jibber, 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 jibber. Okay, there's a lot of seeded crap. There's cedars. Case of Gaia was one. There's several of these people. Um, Maxwell, Jordan Maxwell, UCC. Seeded jibber, jibber, crap. Absolute nonsense. Well, and this is why all the people that are freemen on the land, all the common law people, all the Magna Carta people, all these people, thousands, tens and thousands of people, failed for the past two decades or more. They've all failed. They cannot get a repeat process procedure that works every time. Right. Because they're all talking the same jibber, 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 and it's all bullshit. And so the flags and the and the gold, uh, whatever, tassels on them and all that is just all, all white noise. The, the flags and the what? The gold? You know, they talk about a flag, if it's got tassels on it. Is it tassels? I'm not using the right word, but... Anyway. Okay, a flag, a flag with gold braid round it is is a um, admiralty court. Okay, uh, but you're saying that that's irrelevant. That whole argument of, of ship in dry dock and no, it's got nothing to do with the ship in in dry dock. It's a military court. Okay, all right, all right, okay. So Phil McConnell, they haven't been able to get him out, but then his camp is all arguing with him with each other. They're trying, Kirk Pendergrass is trying common law and somebody else is, is somebody trying well, to hate his court. Again, you're in the wrong room. This, this, this is a dead room with dead people talking. But if that's because the case, that's why I want to understand why you don't hold any um, weight to the live life claim. Because if it's all dead people talking in a dead room, surely well, the live dead, life claim. Dead, dead people cannot talk to someone who's alive. Can't hear you, can't see you. Yeah, so then why? what's your objection to the live life claim then? I don't understand that. Because you're taking a set of drafts into a chess match. It's in the wrong room. It's completely wrong. So which room you would live go life into claim? That room. I go into that room, I am Mr. David Ward, the person. I am that legal fiction. Right. Because right. it was Mr. David Ward, the person, that won the case law. Right. And you, judge, have got no authority unless you can show me the 67 million formally agreed acts uh, led the consent of the government. And if you can't do that, judge, you're a terrorist by default. Have a nice day. Fuck so, off. So if I went forward with that same basis, because Irish law is different from English law, I would it's have to... Go... Different. It's not any different at all. Okay. Is there elections in, in Ireland? Yeah, there have been just like two weeks ago. Right, right. There was, there was an elections in the UK a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because, you know, um, Boris. Oh, my God, don't get me started on Boris. <laughs> Boris was not elected as, M as Prime Minister. He only inherited the position because the second um, Prime Minister in inside three years quit the job. And yeah, that, that happened in Ireland as well. Ender Kenny quit and um, Leo Vradka got in. Leo Vradka served for three years under... Uh, Obama, when Obama was governor, I think of Chicago, something like that. But that's how he got in. They, they've done that in quite a few European countries. 
somebody pops in just because somebody else resigned. It's kind of a, you know, inside job. Yeah, but they've not been elected. Under yeah. their own rules, in their own rule book, that guy yeah. has not been elected, therefore yeah. he can't be Prime Minister. Okay, okay. And then, right, so you think I can use the precedent set by you in the UK, I could use that in Ireland effectively? That could be used anywhere on the planet because everywhere is an elected government. Okay. And the election is void. And the other question I have is, they, they let they they let you set that precedent. They're probably mad with themselves now, but they let you set that precedent in a tribunal over a parking ticket. Well, it didn't. The tribunal paperwork didn't come back as paperwork. It came back in an email. It was a PDF file. Right. And that's not a signed and legal document. That is useless to me. Right. So I know at that point in time because I'm checking my email every day. Yeah. Right. I was going back to 2013 here. So I'm checking my email every day for the results of this tribunal. Right. And all I've got back is an unsigned document right. where the Judy Case's secretary is, is just sending me a notification that the adjudicator had said that I had no liability under the Act. No liability to pay the PCN, which have got no liability under the Act. We're back to the words liability and obligation now, which is all contracts. Right. Right. So I've got no liability on you, but that's not a signed document. It's a PDF, and even if I print it off, it's not got any legal signature on it. Right. So now hang on, let me stop there because I'm not finished. The very next day, and this is the critically important part. The very next day, through my letterbox came a letter, a document from the Board of Council, from the government. Yeah which is a, a declaration of, of no contest. And it is signed with a wet ink signature. Wow. Now we've got legal, legal agreements. Yeah. That is now a contract. That is now a legal agreement signed with a declaration of no contest that the government have got no authority. Wow. So that one piece of paper is all anybody on this planet needs. That's amazing. Now then, having won that case, having got that piece of paper, and with the additional knowledge that I already knew about Shadran Kathuthas confirming the fact that the state is a company, I've now got a legal document confirming the fact that the government are not a government. Because with if there's no material evidence in the form of the legal signed consent of the government that there is any governed people then there cannot be a government because you cannot have one without the other. Right. So I took that, I put it inside an affidavit with the Shadran Kathuthas, with the, the Lord Chief Justice and a lot of other stuff. And I sent that an affidavit to 657 MPs in office. Okay. Now an affidavit is another legal document. It's another legal process. The affidavit serves one function and one function only. It's, it's to solidify and create an agreement. A valid legal agreement because it's a legal document. You're basically saying, these are the facts. Now you've got 28 days to rebut or redress or prove to me that I am wrong. Okay. And the whole function of an affidavit is if they do not or cannot then there is a formal and legal agreement to the facts. Right. So now, with the affidavit itself, yeah, there is a formal and legal agreement to the facts 657 times. Right, because nobody rebutted it. Because it can't rebut the facts. Okay. Okay. So, so, my, so that's where the precedent was set. You got the legal document, you put it in an affidavit. I've set three legal precedences. I've set 657 legal precedences, not just one anymore. The formal agreement is to all of the content of that affidavit that the government is a state. Okay. And the state is a company. That the government have got no authority. That's the case law that I want that the judge is a sub office of the state and therefore is a janitor. Right. So none of these people have got any authority without the legal agreement or consent of the government. Now right. let's go back to the use and function of power of attorney. 
They want you to have legal representation where you give that lawyer power of attorney. They they go they go mad for that. Yeah, you know, when I went to the police, it, when they in, I went in voluntarily and gave them a two and a half hour videoed uh, statement of facts after the harassment uh, allegation, and then they said. If this goes to trial, it will be released to your solicitor, and uh, I'm I've, I'm also entitled to a copy of the statement that the complainant made. And again, I'm told that would go to your solicitor. And I I, I remember saying at the time I, I probably won't uh, have a solicitor, and they're saying, oh no, you'll get legal aid. It's all right, blah blah blah. But I don't want a solicitor because I don't want to declare myself incompetent. No, no, because you're going to retain your own power of attorney. If you give yeah. your power of attorney away, this power of attorney is the most powerful thing that anyone can have. What is it that the government do not have? They don't have no one sign. Right, you, the, the power of attorney that you give away is your power of attorney. Right. Okay. When you give it to that lawyer to represent you, apart from the fact that you've declared yourself an imbecile, yeah. you've given your power of attorney away. Okay. So, that the, so that the lawyer can represent you. And without that power of attorney, no lawyer or barrister can represent you. Right. The government do not have the people's power of attorney. So the government cannot represent us. Okay. Okay, so tell me this. These are all legal signed documents, and without the legal signed documents in evidence, there is no government. Right, so I can cite the precedents you've set in, yeah. in my paper argument. And will it be... No, 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 this is not an argument. Okay. An argument is something that can be argued against. Okay. It's a fact. Okay. But Dr. David is a fact. Okay, so I will submit... Uh, no, no, you're not, you're not submitting. Okay. Yeah, because you've got to stop. Yeah, every time you use yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Words. I get it. The, I get it. The power of words. The so power I of will. Words. I will dispatch to Claire Loftus, the director of public prosecutions in Ireland, so called, uh, a printout of your sixty-five page affidavit and a cover letter from myself, um, saying kindly forward this to the complainant, Ricky Dearman, and. Um, uh, what else should I say? Well, oh, we're going to get good. This is where we're going to get real clever. Now, the only thing that he's going to come against you with, or it appears to me that he can come against you with, is the fact that he's, he's claiming that he's, his business has suffered. It's economics. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what you, we were having a, 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 a sex conversation as to what he's, he's actually claiming that, that you have, Exposed. I don't know. All, I, all I've been told is harassment. I've been told harassment. Yeah, he's making a claim of harassment, but on what grounds? What's his material evidence that you are harassing him? And and all all I got from that conversation, which was text, is is the fact that you've been finding stuff on companies' houses. I haven't released any of that yet. That's very recent information. I only sent you a copy of that. I haven't gone public with that, and a lot of people have uncovered connections to. Uh, yeah, it's public knowledge. If they've uncovered from formal, from formal from public sourced information, companies' right. house that, that is not cannot be considered or construed as harassment. No, because it's public knowledge. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. So, so this there are more and more documents coming forward confirming that there's there's very strong indication of uh, uh, you know based in in their courts it, of impropriety at the very least. That's a polite way of putting it. There's very you're going to you're going to try and screw every and, and skew everything to their benefit, you know, in words with, you know, making a claim that 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 you know. Yeah, he's trying to say that, that by well, by my keeping the case alive, um, you know, it's it's ruined his life. It's ruined his ability to make a living. It's ruined his reputation. Right, that's it's commercial. Ruined. This is the point I'm trying to get to, and that means it's civil. This is not criminal, it's civil. Right. Defamation of character is, is jibber, jibber, jibber. Yeah? But I haven't defamed his character. His children made approximately 30 video disclosures of horrendous abuse against him and others. Right. So those, those videos were leaked online in 2015, and then the police alleged retraction videos turned up online, and 
hundreds of millions of people viewed them around the world. It was enough evidence corroborated by the two children, both separately and together, to warrant a criminal investigation playing in their playground. But it was heard in a secret family court and uh, all it warranted was a 12 day fact finding mission. And there was vast cover up. There were refurbishments of all the alleged crime scenes. There were no forensic examinations. Um, it, it was a travesty from beginning to end, but I've never gone after him. I've simply kept the children's testimonies alive until they get properly dealt with. Which they can't do. Not in that context of what you're thinking about where, where the children are going to be kept, they're going to get properly dealt with. And the reason is this, what is it that Jack Beatson said, the Lord Chief Justice? Lord Chief Justice confirmed the fact that the Office of the Judiciary is a sub-office of the state. So anybody above him in that company hierarchy in the executive office, the Lord Chief Justice himself has got no jurisdiction over. Okay. The janitor of the school cannot find out of superiority above the headmaster. Right. And the Lord Chief Justice is the janitor. So everybody in that executive office of governments, everybody, eh, and this is huge, huge, every MP, every board of council, everyone that's in the police, social services, everyone you can think of that's in that government office and in the executive office. And the judge cannot preside over them because he does not have the authority. Okay. So there is no court on the planet where there can be a hearing regarding these children where a judge can preside over someone who is his boss. So how is it not happening that children are being returned to the non-accused parent uh, or to, say, a grandparent or a safe family member? How come so many children are kidnapped and kept away from their birth? Because it's economics. It's purely it's for the cash. It's a money-making thing. Yeah. But it's it, purely for the cash. Every time there's a transaction, there's cash. Yeah, so yeah. If, so if some, if some um, um, foster parents are getting paid by the state, that comes out the public purse. Yeah. Okay? That's economics. The, 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 the child care people are paid by the day, by the hour, by what they do. Yeah, and even okay. the psychologists that put labels on the mothers or... or yeah, that's all economics. And, and that's why the, the children are being kidnapped for any fucking reason whatsoever, is, is the economics. Now, given that, given that this precedent or these precedents that you've set and this knowledge that you've uncovered could collapse societies as we know them... It will collapse the criminal society because the criminal society is not a government. They are just outright criminals. Right, but given how dangerous it is in way that this information is, how much persecution have you suffered? How much targeting have you suffered since you won your cases? I'm still alive. With something as devastating as that, where I've won case, confirmation from the Executive Office of Government, we are not a government. That case should never have been happened in, at the tribunal. I should have been dead. Yeah. Because the ramifications of that are global. Yeah. So I should have been dead before the case. I should have been dead after the case. Run over by a truck, whatever. Then I served an affidavit against 657 MPs in office. You've got access to the best of the best, judges, barristers. So... Before that came to 28 days, I should have been dead. I'm still here. And then once I've done that, I use that as my foundation in facts, that affidavit, because it can't be contested. This is now formally agreed facts. Right. Which is why I did it by way of an affidavit. Okay. I use that as my foundation for everything else I've done, which is 38 for me personally securitized commercial liens against officers of government, against the executive office of government, against judges. Right. 
and have you uh, I know you're not in it for getting compensation have but have you uh, manifested any liens if you've served liens on people have you have you been awarded any any compensation or whatever well it's taken me 10 years to get this to this point you know I'm the first guy in, in the history that I'm aware of that's actually securitized a lien. A lien is a commercial asset, but it's not a securitized instrument. Okay. Okay, a securitized instrument is a bond or a pledge or what the application when you make at the bank, when you go into the bank and you fill out that paper, the guy who signed that paper is the one that's standing as a surety. And it's that piece of paper that creates the, the fiat currency. Okay. And then the banks tell you that it's a loan and that's where the banks commit fraud. But the banks are licensed by the executive office of governments who commit fraud. That's what a license is. Okay. A license is a permission to do something which would otherwise be illegal. Okay. So the banks are licensed by the executive office to commit fraud. So the judge cannot preside and find in favor of the bank against his boss because of the license. Which okay. is by all, all, all the bank claims, you know, there's, there's, is, there is court procedure rules written by uh, Mike Grove, um, who is an MP, which stops anyone from actually contesting. It stops the judge being able to see and hear the evidence that's in front of him in, in any house repossession. Okay. Uh, when, when, when I was raided, um, they, they brought what they called a warrant and they I asked to see it and um, I got bad eyesight. So, and I was so much in shock that I was thinking I'll read it when they've gone. I just said, is there a wetting signature on that? And they said, yes. And there was a discrepancy because I said, if I, if my son hadn't opened the door to you, would you have used force? And one of the detectives said, uh, you know, I said, does this warrant entitle you to force entry? And the detective, the lead detective said yes. And then another detective said, oh no, but we would have gone and got that. But when I went to look for the warrant, when they'd gone, it was gone. And when I asked them later that afternoon, where's my copy of the warrant? They said, oh, we don't have to give you a copy. We only have to show it to you. So no, they've got that, to give you a copy of the warrant. He who yeah. make the claim carries the obligation. This is a maxim. I use this maxim every single time in every security size lien that I've done, we're talking 38 liens against the executive officers of governments, judges, barristers, lawyers, bailiffs. Right. Okay? Right. I use this one maxim every single time because right. a maxim is a maxim in fact. He who makes a claim carries the obligation to present the material evidence of that claim. So the police has claimed that there is a warrant. He's got to present it to you. He did present it to me, but I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't calm enough to read it and the writing was very small. Take it off him. I did, but then I didn't know they took it away again. When I was all flustered and it was horrible, there were five detectives in my house. I'm a very peaceable citizen, you know, or not citizen, I'm a very peaceful human being. Person. Yeah, it's very distressful when they push your door down. Yeah, and well, they didn't do that because my son opened the door to them. But I, I had planned on studying the warrant and putting it online after they'd gone and they'd taken it with them. And they told me that was their legal right. They didn't have to leave me a copy. I think that's another thing they said. I'll give you this. It's their legal right. We don't have to do this. No, they don't. He who makes a claim has an obligation. That's a contractual obligation because he's made a claim. Okay. To give you that warrant. Okay, so to keep it, to keep this in a bite-sized piece, so that, um, because again, a lot of this goes over your head. Nobody wants to know this stuff until they're in a corner. So I'm going to just simplify it and say, I'm going to print out the affidavit. I'm going to address it to Ricky Dearman, care of the Director of Public Prosecutions, and I'm not going to consent to any uh, attempt to put me in a court or if I go, if I'm taken to a court, um, it will be under duress. If I'm arrested, it will be under duress and, and therefore invalid. We're going to add to that. Okay, go ahead. Do more. We're going to use the, and I, this is something I've actually done myself as well. Okay. Because I've had lots of legal proceedings. Yeah. 
Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk about my divorce. All right. Because this is where I actually used what I'm going to tell you about in reality, in real life. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Wife wants a divorce. Okay. You've got your divorce. Then she wants to go for the house. No mortgage on my house. Now she's in, in gone back to live with daddy, but I've got nowhere to go. Now a house is joint and several, which means it belongs 100% to me and it belongs 100% to her. And she's got no legal grounds to throw me out of my house. Okay. I paid for the house. It's mine. And I've got nowhere to go. So I'm not going to let go at your whim to, to live on the street. It's not going to happen, lady. Have a nice day. So they start the legal proceedings in the courtroom where their lawyers gain the capability to sign documents on my behalf. And I don't care. They can do what they want. Yeah? Because I'm just waiting. You know, I, I, I accumulate and then I act because I have knowledge. So then we get to the point where I've now got a court order from District Judge of the Chief directly to me. You've got to sell your house. It's a court order for me, for me to sell a house. So I wrote a letter to her and her lawyers. I don't care about District Judge of the Chief. Okay? And I implemented the contempt of court reporting restrictions. Now these are these you can now write that down. Well, right, I'm gonna use this video for reference, okay? Absolutely. Contempt, look it up on Google, find it. Contempt of court and re reporting restrictions and go to the civil section. Yeah? Yeah. A judge cannot implement the use of force in a civil matter. It doesn't say that in so many words, you've got to read it very carefully. But a judge cannot implement the use of force in a civil matter because to implement the use of force in a civil matter is an act of terrorism. And the contempt of court reporting restrictions restricts the judge. And the judges know this. The yeah. judges know that they cannot implement the use of force in a civil matter. So I use this. I downloaded it. I, I, public, I printed it off. I referenced it. And I said, basically, so District Judge Latif can take a long walk off a long pier. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Yeah? Yeah. In other words, take one, do a runner, monkey boy. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. You got that. That's exactly what I did. And I signed the document and sent it to her lawyers and her. You right. know what her lawyers did next? They made an application for penal for contempt of court to a different judge in a different town in Liverpool. Wow. And guess what the judge did? No chance. Have a nice day. This is a civil matter. Right. Wow. Right. Wow. Contempt of court and reports and restrictions does not allow the use of force in a civil matter. Wow. So it doesn't, as long as this is a civil matter and it is going to be in economics, he's going to make a claim that he's lost income with his claim against you in court. That's civil. Okay. So you're going to, you, before you get to court, with the affidavit, you're going to include that and say, see this guy directly, do what you want to do, monkey boy. Don't give a shit. Because, A, your affidavit, here it is within this document, confirms the fact that the state is a company and the judge has got no jurisdiction <clears throat> because he's just a janitor. It's right there in black and white confirmed by the 657 MPs and therefore formally agreed, yeah? Okay. And, they... and there's no one giving their consent and agreed to the government and the government do not have power of attorney. The government do not have power of attorney, which is why they always want you to have been represented by a lawyer. Okay. That power of attorney is critical. So your judge has got no authority. I'm implementing the, 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 the consent the reports and restrictions Basically, you're pissing in the wind, monkey boy. Have a nice day. Fuck off. Right, because in the in the secret 12-day fact-finding mission for these yes. children, there were reporting restrictions, and the judge only allowed two selected uh, media mainstream media newspapers to report. And as soon as she, as soon as it finished, their reports of her judgment instantly appeared in the paper 
it was preordained um and yeah. she and she forbade others you know th this reporting restrictions thing is used a lot with taking children off of mothers yeah but know? that's reporting restrictions where they are binding the, the reporters report, putting restrictions where the court is putting restrictions on reporters that's not what i'm talking about oh okay i'm okay. talking about the consent of court reporting restrictions restricts the judge from using contempt of court because if he holds you in contempt of court in a civil matter that itself is an act of terrorism okay and you can drag his candy ass down to the queen's bench to the to the to the rcj the real courts of justice it'll be ireland i'm talking ireland so well so. whatever the same is in ireland yeah 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 the four courts yeah the foot right whether whatever that is because you're going to charge the judge for being a terrorist okay good all yeah. right all which right is why which is why we can we can serve the judge or serve him notify him yeah about the contempt of court reports and restrictions in a civil matter basically a judge can take a flying leap and then just on moral grounds as a divorced woman <laughs> i never claimed i never claimed anything off my ex i i went to mediation i was in the four courts and i had a legal team and barristers and everything set and uh, he had an inheritance that I was entitled to half of and so on and so forth. And he begged me and said, um, you know, we're both Christians, you know, I'm not going to do the wrong thing. Let's not do this through court because I'm getting no legal aid and it's costing me a fortune. So like a mug, I said, OK. And we went to mediation for six months and we wrote a contract that we both agreed to. And when it came time to sign it, he said, I just want to show this to my family. And I've never seen it since. And I had said, anything I'm entitled to, give it to the boys, give it to our sons, you know, mm -hmm. alimony. And when his dad had died, his dad had told me ahead of time, I've included the grandchildren and named the grandchildren in the will. And he, he my ex messed the whole thing up. My children didn't get their inheritance and they didn't get anything, you know, anything like the 50% that I would have been entitled to. I think there's something sort of morally questionable about wives putting claims in on, or any, or even husbands putting claims in on their spouses' inheritances. You know, you see that in Ireland where somebody might have had a farm for generations and then there's a divorce and then the wife wants to force the sale of the farm, collapsing the whole generational continu continuity of the land, you know. But morally, if you're divorced, and and I get your argument, you don't want to have no roof over your head, but do you see that, you know, your wife, even though you bought the house with perhaps paper money, but your wife contributed to that, is there anything that you did give her or would give her? For like, for instance, when you die, she'll be entitled to half that property, presumably. Well, I no longer live in the property because the government stole my house anyway. Oh, you lost the house? Yeah. Wow. That's another story. But the fact is this, on a moral basis alone, why should the woman be able to do that to a guy using the courts when the guy is going to end up dead on the streets of the hypothermia? Yeah. No, no spouse should put their partner on the streets, homeless. That's I Well, if I was forced to sell that house, where would I live? So you didn't sell it, they stole it off you? No, no, no. Her lawyers didn't manage to sell it. I boxed them up so hard and so tight they could not sell it. Right. Okay. Right. The, the government that stole my house. Oh, gosh. Well, and it was the Board of Council that stole my house. More orchestrated fraud, but it's still theft because there's no mortgage on my house. And how come the laws that you used couldn't stop that from happening? Because. First of all, they're not laws that I use, and let's face it. The precedents you set. How the precedents I set are legal precedences. How does a legal precedence and documentation stop terrorists? Because you've got a terrorist government been in, that's been in effect for 800 years, and they are terrorists. People right. say, or people have come up with the idea, well, if you wrap it all up in a trust and they can't touch it, well, the terrorists are going to come and take it anyway because they are terrorists. This is what they do. They've been doing it for 800 years. They've been getting away with it for 800 years. 
Right, so presuming that there are some bad people in power in every country, if the bad people want to want to silence me, any amount of me proving precedence that they don't have the authority to do that ultimately wouldn't protect me, would it? Nothing you can do on paper will protect you. It's not protected me. Right. You stole my house. Right. Right. So basically it's down to me and God then. <laughs> Um, but I will, I will, I think I will. Now, I know hang on, hang on, hang on. For, for years, prior to the, 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 the government actually stealing my house by force, everything I'd done prior to that had a 100% success rate with okay. the paperwork. Okay. Uh, it's a bit like your friends with Tom Crawford. Um, they stole his house as well, didn't they? Every house that's been repossessed is a stolen property. Yeah, I think I agree Including with that. Tom Crawford's. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, Gordon Bowden just died. Did you follow his work at all? I didn't know he was dead. But no, I, I, I know of Gordon Bowden, and he's gone down the, the wrong road as, as everybody else has, you know. Okay. If, if you keep running into that courtroom and running into that courtroom, you're running into, into a courtroom by criminals. Why do you keep running into a courtroom by criminals? It's an oxymoron. Don't do it. Stay out of that office because it's not a court of law it's got nothing to do with the law it's a private company office mcdonald's stay out of that office okay okay so um and this the thing about a civil claim um uh, my understanding is that they like to get uh, a, a clay they like to get a case in court one and that opens the floodgates for civil claims is that is that the way they think Yes, because any business that they can bring in by any means is business for them. They're getting paid. But Ricky Dearman, if he's told, no, sorry, we can't help you, it's a civil matter, would he... I mean, I, I own my house with no mortgage, but I... I uh, my Well, there are reasons I don't think they could take it, but I hear you on terrorists can do anything they want, you know, including yeah. kill you. And um, that's where my faith comes in. <laughs> but so anyway, I'm going to I'm going to go with this. And I know traditionally in Ireland, if anybody has turned up in court and tried to go against the bankers and go against the, the well, this is it. Don't go to the courtroom. Yeah, no. In I'm really circumstances, do you walk in? Right, it's like this. We're talking about gaining authority over you. Actions, yeah. words, and deeds. Okay. Okay. If you walk into that courtroom of your own volition, in other words, you're not there under duress. If you walk into that room right. by stepping one foot into that room, right. your actions have agreed that the judge has got authority. Okay. You're okay. ruined at that point. All you're right. Good. All right. So I've got my strategy. I think I'm going to send the affidavit. You're going to send me something additional to add to the affidavit. Um, you're going to look up the contempt of court and reports and restrictions. Right. And and everything else that I've done is published online. Okay. Yeah, it's just for somebody like me who's not, um, that's not, I think that's you, is it? Yeah, I mean, it's Mike again. I need to, I need to decline it. Hang on. Right. Yeah, for somebody like me, I need walking through this because it's all a bit, I'm not, I'm not trying to plead stupid. I've, I've got my, everybody's good at something and this is not something I'm good at. I've got to knock at the door. We're back in a minute. All right. Uh, all right. So this is scary stuff, people. And as David rightly said, he's won 38 cases, but he lost his house. Um, so this is this is uh, scary stuff. But I'd rather um, I'd rather do what feels like the right thing. And it definitely right from the get go has not felt right to retain solicitors. Um, you know, and and. Uh, so this, yeah, I'm, this is the path I'm going to take. I'm going to submit the affidavit to Ricky Dearman, care of the Irish Director of Public Prosecutions, and I'm going to research this um, contempt of court reporting restrictions, restricting the judge from implementing use of force in a civil matter. And we'll see where it goes from there. And you'll, 
I'm not sure. I, this is the first time I've met or spoken with David, and um, I'm not sure whether he's a believer, but I am. So ultimately, uh, Psalm 91, you know, and Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against me will prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me in judgment I will condemn and show to be in the wrong. And, uh, you know, I, I, I am a peaceful person. I, I think the word anarchy is misused i think anarchy I, I, you know i had a boyfriend once that was involved with stop the city in london in the 70s and a sort of violent protest that's not who i am um and i think it's not who most certainly most women are but at the same time i i would defend my children with my life you know and use any means necessary to defend my children i'm going to i'm going to wind this up for now david and um and get on to doing what I need to do. And as I say, I might be ahead of myself because at the moment there is no, the GPP hasn't come back with a decision. And the, just one last question. Do you recommend that I keep the um, evidence video of financial uh, anomalies from companies house? It, it sounds like you said I'm not breaking any laws or harassing anybody because all that information is publicly sourced. Is that right? Well, exactly. How can you be breaking in it also harassment when it's all public knowledge anyway? All right, so, so I'll be you for harassment or defamation of character or anything like that. Okay. You're going to be able to come after you on a commercial basis, which is civil. Loss of income. And, and yeah. uh, you know, if his, I would say his loss of income started with his beautiful children's disclosures, you know, so. Yeah, they they uh, disclose that, not you. Yeah. All right. Okay, we'll talk again if, if you're up for it, David. I appreciate your time. Is there anything else you want to say? Yes, there is. Did it, did it talk about Mike Miller and his dog? You told me that one, yeah. yeah. Right, so the dog had committed no crime and he got the dog back. That's the right. same as, as now, yeah, it's the same as doing a habeas corpus. But okay. he did it with the chief of police. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So an habeas corpus is, is not only just for, for the dog or for the guy in jail. You can do an habeas corpus and get your computers back. Yeah, I think it's probably it's time. Like, it's like illegal detention, illegal detainment. And you've not got any proceedings in court. So your computers are being detained illegally. Oh, I get it now. The same as the yeah, dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dog. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love it when the penny drops. Yeah, I will do that. Oh, so that's another affidavit signed and sent to the chief of police or whoever's detaining your kit. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be the chief of police or, or the, 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 the detectives, whoever, who's retaining your kit as evidence. Yeah. It, they, it's a illegal detention of your kit because there's no proceedings in the court. You want it back. You want it back now. So you do that by the use of an habeas corpus because that's legislation. You can't, you can't say no. Okay. It's got to do as it's told. Okay, right. Yeah. Right, so so offline, perhaps you'll help me get that stuff together. That would be wonderful if you do have the time. Yes. Brilliant, thank so you. So there's a lot that you can do, you know, on paper that can have a great deal of effect on this guy, yeah? Yeah. And, and influence him because he does, let's forget it, this guy does not know anything that we've talked about today. He does not know that the government, uh, well, he probably does know, but he probably doesn't know about the case law. He doesn't know about the affidavit. He doesn't know that the judge has got no authority and basically you're going to give the judge the finger. <laughs> so what's the point of taking me to court? You're numb nuts, you know? Uh, okay. All right. So this is, uh, do you want people to be able to find you on Facebook or are you busy enough already? I'm, uh, well, people do know me on Facebook. I've spent 18 hour days on Facebook for the past six, since 2013. So shall I give out people your Facebook name if they want to contact you? It would be best, well, yes, people are contacting me like yourself did all the time on Facebook. Right. But direct people to where the affidavit is on Facebook. Okay. All right. I'll probably share a copy of it on my Facebook. Um, yeah. and, 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 it, and there's a copy on your Facebook as well. And what's the affidavit referred to as? Well, it's called the Affidavit of, of, of Statements of Facts. Okay. And it's actually in the group uh, files folder for the group called... Security by the way of a lean. Security by the way of a lean. And yeah. these lean, I keep asking you a question. I'm going to write that down actually. <clears throat> so affidavit. I people to that, yeah. Affidavit. Because we need to read that affidavit themselves. A statement of fact. 
and it's in the files. And so on Facebook, you're Baron David Ward. Yes, I am. Okay. And uh, with regards to the liens, do you hope to be compensated for everything that's happened to you? Right. These are security science commercial instruments. You know, it took me 10 years to do all this work. Okay. First of all, I had to do all the research. Then I won the case law. Then you've got to think about what you're going to do next, which was the affidavit. Then you're going to think about what you're going to do next, which is to start doing the security science commercial liens. And now I'm at the stage where we need to find and identify a commercial vehicle so we can cash these liens in. Okay. Right. And that is going to be crypto. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. We're going to use a 30 million pound commercial instrument, which is the same as fiat currency to buy crypto. Why? Because once we've got the crypto, you can filter that back into your bank. Okay. Crypto is a commercial vehicle, the same as a bank is a commercial vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now, now, a year ago, I had two offers of contract from two different developer companies to actually get that done, but I didn't have the funding. I right. Didn't, I didn't have the, the, the fiat currency to, to pay for it. Right. But now we've got a funder. There's a, a little good lady that, that said, yeah, let's get on with it. Wow. So now we're going back to that as of a couple of weeks ago to, to find the developer companies to get the programmers to do a Lien coin, so we're cashing liens. So then you're looking at 1.95 billion instantaneous cash, and we can automate this. Okay. Because well, all you need to do a lien then is, is a evidence of fraud. Well, evidence of fraud is a VAT receipt. Wow. Wow. Okay, right, let's wind it up for there. You can find me on YouTube and Facebook, Angela Power Disney, or smaller backup channels, Angie Power Disney, both on Facebook and YouTube. My blog is angelascashes.org, and Baron David Ward is on Facebook, and uh, he, rather than overwhelming him with uh, personal messages, people can access his affidavit there, and, and I'll hopefully we'll, we'll do this again, and we'll keep you updated of what's going on. Okay, David, thanks a million. You take care. All right, God bless.